Hi and welcome back. So we've let our handle cure overnight and so now we're going to unwrap it and see our finished product. So kind of a moment of truth but overall should be good. And again you don't get it right the first time you can always try again no harm in that all right so looking at our handle looks like it came out pretty well seam looks nice and good no real gaps or anything so there you go we got us nice seam and then the overall handle so again pretty nice can't complain so yeah definitely excellent so what we can do at this point is kind of clean up some of the excess leather um sometimes on some handles um they will uh Kind of overlap um, the leather and place it on the end caps of the handle I don't mind doing that sometimes it's not very good on um, external nut or internal nut sorts because if the leather is too thick it can kind of um, the tension of the nut will kind of not be able to mesh it down well and then you'll get your pommel sliding so that's something that I tend to try to avoid but basically what we want to do is, is just kind of cleanly go around. And remember, we don't want to cut too much. So kind of just use the um, top of the handle as a guide and make your cut nice and clean. Again, if the knife isn't cutting it, um, you can use the scissors and touch it up. All right. So you see I got a little bit of fraying from going a little too light, so we'll just kind of Come back in and tuck that up, or if it's overlapping, you can kind of chop it off by using the handle as a block. You just want to be very easy and gentle, don't want to cut off too much leather. We don't want any of the uh, undercord exposed. So, all right, so that'll do because the rest will kind of push in under the handle and look good. I'm mean, under the pommel, excuse me. And then we'll get this little top curve off. Again, being careful not to take off too much. we go so our nice finished grip so again pretty easy to do at home as you've seen um, does take some time so definitely um, take some time so um, what we can do next is um, is I can show you how to texture your leather and then we will finish it off with reassembling the sword. So, all right, see you in a bit. All right, welcome back. So now we're gonna go to the final step, which is completely optional. I mean, our grip is good as is, but if you wanna have that nice aesthetic of, of texturing and you like how it feels and looks, then 
this is the way to do it. So what you'll need is, is you will need a sponge or um, wash, washcloth um, or dish rag, um, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna dampen the leather. And basically what you wanna do is, is take your wet towel and just kind of wrap it around the handle and get that leather wet. So, when you have the leather nice and wet, you're going to take your linen that you used for your under wrap and you're going to just start kind of wrapping the handle in places. So, the best way to do this, um, so you have the best texture and it doesn't affect the riser is, is I normally will start a wrap around around the riser. Uh, so, and just get it really nice and tight. You want to try to keep it flush similar to the under cord simply because you're going to be um, trying to get as much texture in as possible. Again overlapping doesn't really matter on this though because you're just trying to get a nice tight bond to it. And then when you get down to the end, if you're not wanting, now you can overlap on the riser like we did when we were doing the cord, um, you know, for drying the, uh, the epoxy. But if you do that, uh, just be aware you're going to get a nice little cross niche. So if you don't want that, usually the best thing to do is, is um, like get some electrical tape or scotch tape and just kind of tape your um, um, linen right there and then um, just nip it off um, so kind of similar to this so yeah so just like that and that the tapes basically just to kind of keep it there so it doesn't loosen up um, and then you just kind of keep going as you go personally I would re-wet the leather as you go because it will dry pretty quick. Just get it wet again, have you a, a bowl of water like I have here just in case you need to um, re-dampen your cloth. And then we're just going to wrap around as such. So, and then this is easier if you don't have as many risers because then you're not going to have as much space and as you see I, I didn't grab any tape before I came on but I'll tape that up um, later and retighten that but yeah you just want to get these nice little bonds you want to make sure to get right up to the risers that way um, you know the lot the risers pop and you have that real nice um, indention for the risers it helps with grip but also just with general look and appeal so all right so that's how you do it pretty simple and then what we're going to do is is we're going to let after we get these all done and textured, what we're going to do is, is we're going to let them rest and dry with the linen cord um, for anywhere from three to five hours longer, if you want. Basically, the longer you wait and the more the leather dries, the more the indentation is going to stick. And then it's also going to be beneficial because we have that under cord um, it's also going to kind of push into that under cord and that's why we want to wrap it so tight and then basically you have the two linen cords kind of going together and giving a nice strong indentation on the under of the leather and on the top of the leather and then you're going to get that really nice under cord look 
that you see on more higher end um, and custom uh, sword handles. So, all right, excellent. So, um, so I'll stop the video here. Um, and then when I get all these finished, um, I'll go over and I will do the, uh, the sword handle assembly. Hi, and welcome back. So as you can see, I got my linen finished texturing the leather. See, they're nice, tight, um, thick bonds, because like I said, we really want that um, linen cord to press down on the leather and make those indentations that are going to last and, and, and look good for a long time. And as you can see, just little um, pieces of tape, electrical tape, any tape you got, masking tape or whatever to just, um, you know, to kind of keep those strings from fraying and coming loose. So there we go. So like I said, after about a few hours, three, maybe four or five hours, um, you can take off this linen and you should have real nice indentations. Um, the longer you wait, um, normally the... Uh, more indented they are you just don't want to take it off too soon so definitely wait at least you know three hours or so and that should be enough but if you want it to really pop have the patience and uh and take it to uh you know about five hours or so so all right so let's get the blade back and we will finish up this do it yourself by putting the handle back on so when we get the handle back on, we're basically going to have to kind of work through that epoxy a little bit that's in the handle. And there's two ways of doing this. You can either, one, kind of screw it down as I am, so I'm kind of getting through it. There we go. And then just kind of bring the handle back down flush and looking good. All right, so, and sometimes it can matter some with these swords, sometimes, especially with that epoxy lay on how the handle will go back down. It looks like I had it right the first time. So there we go. And then, again, we just take our pommel it down and like I said if you have little leather frays or you have little leather overwrap make sure to tuck those in that way they're not sticking out too bad um, but yeah here we go and then we'll take the external nut and just screw that back on And then we will finish by tightening. And again, we just take our um, little cushion so we don't scratch up our handle. I mean, not our handle, but our, uh, excuse me, our little external nut. I'll widen these out a little bit so they get over that. Pinch it down, and then we will tighten it up. All right, so as you can see, our pommel, let's see, we'll get that a little more flush. good
And there we have it. Sword is back together, nice and tight, and looking good. Again, these external nuts are not a big issue. Um, you know, pretty easy to customize this sword. For example, if you wanted to put um, a new pommel or guard on this blade, definitely this external nut makes that a whole lot easier. Uh, wanted to redo the handle or even carve a new handle, absolutely. And that's one of the benefits of the budget market and having, um, you know, disassemble um, swords that can be disassembled is um, the ease of customization. And that's why I wanted to do this first video on one of these external nuts, um, just to kind of show that ease. Now there are a lot of different um, swords that do, um, or brand manufacturers that do offer um, uh, disassembly on their swords and um, for starters there's of course windless uh, the Hanway tinker line um, some older valiant armory lines um, that also have um, internal nuts like the Hanway tinkers um, Depeka, um, some Han Hanway models come with external nut or screw pommels um, then of course there's also like the rapiers and, and things like that um, that, that allow that disassembly and aren't peened. Um, another one, of course, is katanas, which already kind of come with a wide array of, of um, customization options, but definitely they are really easy to customize yourself at home. So I hope you enjoyed this um, video series on do-it-yourself with disassembling, reassembling, and of course doing the grip wraps. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys have any other do-it-yourself projects you'd like me to take on. I have a few others in mind that I was going to, uh, to post as well. But if you guys have anything that you guys would like help with or something I could show you, um, definitely put it in the comments and I will see what I can do. So, um, so I guess I'll wrap this video up. Thanks again for watching. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something. And... Um, even as a step-by-step -step guide, we're able to uh, wrap your own handle or disassemble your own sword with me, and I was able to help you. So, all right. Well, we will see you next time.